is the recurrence rate of SIBO right now? I mean, it's well in the 80%. Staggering. Uh, I'm Maggie UMD. I am a functional and holistic medicine physician and the creator of the Transform Protocol to help turn around any autoimmune disease around naturally. And Kiran, I'd love for you to introduce yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for having me. So I'm Kiran Krishnan. I'm a research microbiologist with a heavy focus on the last uh, 10, 15 years in the, in the human microbiome and how the gut microbiome and other biomes, all the microbes in and around us, how they impact our overall health. And, and best of all, what are the healing opportunities within this uh, powerful ecosystem of microbes in order to improve outcomes? I have all these questions here on people talking about Lyme or SIBO or like I have candida and it's like, how do I kill it? How do I kill it? I'm, I almost sometimes feel like it's a waste of time. Yeah. It really is a waste of time and mental energy to sit here talking about how to kill it on this end because you're just going to get it back. Totally. I mean, what's the recurrence rate of SIBO? What's the recurrent yeah. waste of candida? Do you know what, what is the recurrence rate of SIBO right now? I mean, it's well in the 80%. Staggering. Uh, yeah. Staggering. And these people through thousands of dollars of antibiotics. And and every and every cycle of killing to try to get rid of it actually makes it makes you more susceptible to the recurrence because you're damaging the environment even more after that, right? So it's just it's a fruitless process of trying to go through continuous rounds of antibiotics, antimicrobials to try to get rid of it because it, it doesn't happen that way. Well, and then I, you know, I see uh, Amy who brought up this question and she's talking about, do we need to avoid foods that stimulate bile, et cetera, bacterial growth? So what does the role of food have to do with our environment? So, you know, when you, when you think about it, it's really about, are you eating the right things to feed the commensals, right? Yeah. It, is your food supporting a diverse ecosystem? And, and and that's that's a real crux of it all. And and to me, one of the sad things to see when people have severe digestive issues is they go through processes and processes of elimination, right? Elimination. So it's shrinking and shrinking and shrinking the number of things that you eat. It's staggeringly it, terrible. It is. And and there are people that end up eating four different kinds of foods, and that's the oh only four things they can handle. Yeah. And, and now your commensals aren't getting the basic nutrients they need. So their numbers start to go down. Right. The overgrowing or infectious elements start to go up. Yeah. Easier for them to grow. Yeah. And, and the problem continues to persist. And in fact, it drives even more intolerance, which makes you eat even fewer 100%. foods. Right? It's, it's just a, a vicious cycle. Uh, it is a vicious cycle. And yeah. that's me why food mapping, we, in our program, we do a unique process food mapping where we actually use your, your blood work to have very accurate data on exactly number one, which food allergies or sensitivities you have that's triggering it. Yeah. You remove it. And, but what people find is around when you're looking at the typical elimination diet, people are eliminating 20 to 30%, if not up oh, to yeah. like 90% of foods in their diet. Yeah. When you have a targeted list and many people find it's like two things, it's broccoli and sesame or something. Mm -hmm. And then what most people find after going through food mapping in the program is they're actually reintroducing a shit ton of food, which is wonderful because they're getting all these different macro micronutrients, phytonutrients for the bacteria in their gut to actually grow. So for me, number one, how do you clean up your diet? You got to do food mapping, proper testing and understanding of those test results, especially for someone with autoimmune disease. What I found is a lot of people with autoimmune disease have false positive or false negatives when it comes to these testing. So if you don't, as a physician and as the client, understand what these are, then you're still getting data that's misinterpreted. So you don't understand what the right things to move. And then you say it doesn't work. So that's where food mapping is really different. Eliminating stuff is not a healing process. It is not a healing process. And so, so, so that's so, we can't emphasize that enough that in order to heal, you know, you need to be able to figure out what your triggers are, go through a, a mapping process like you've created, and then start adding back in foods that are going to feed the system, feed yep. the pencils and provide the healer. Well, I think that's the key. People don't realize that uh, probably 80% of what we do is helping people reintroduce more foods back. Yeah.
people think that food mapping, which is our process is like eliminating more food. I just had someone yesterday who was able to reintroduce all dairy products back because he learned that it was actually not an allergy or a sensitivity, but it was um, lactose intolerance, digestion mm. problem, not an allergy problem. So right. if you take the enzyme to help you digest it, he could actually eat it again. That's awesome. Voila. If you wanted to learn more about the transform program, there is a link in chat for you to book a chat with our team.